Hello again, this time it's parallel resistance. Um, this one's the one that kind of trips up the apprentices at first, um, but it's still Ohm's law. We're still playing with Ohm's law. There's uh, nothing changed, but the calculation to work out your total uh, is a little bit different. So let's just give these resistances a label. So I'm going to call this R1, R2, and R3, just like we did with the series circuit. Uh, but the equation's a little bit different. So, it's this. One plus one over R2 plus one over R3. Now, why so different? Um, in the last series circuit, we just added them up. And we're still adding them up. Um, but we're adding their inverted values up. Um, and the reason is because the voltage is the same up until this point, um, and then it's going to create a different current based on whatever's in the way. Now, there's an old saying that says, the current travels the path of least resistance, which isn't actually true. It travels all paths um, of all resistances, but obviously, if there's less in the way of one, um, so in this case, these two, the first one and the third one, these are lower resistances than the center one. So we'd expect more current to flow through this one and that one than we would from that one. And this is where the one over comes from. Um, and you can think of parallel currents and parallel resistances a bit like, you know, when you go to the underground and if they've only got one ticket barrier open, it's going to take a long time to get through if there's loads of people there. And that represents a, a small current flow. Open up all the gates, everyone can get through easier. There's more routes for the current to travel. Happy days, people get through, fast current flow. It is the same kind of logic, really. Anyway, so. How do we do this in real terms? So our equation, RT is equal to one over RT, and we'll discuss that bit in a minute, uh, is equal to one over R1. In this case, it's one over three, plus one over 12, plus one over three again. Now, I mean, they are fractions, so you can add them um, as if they're fractions and whatever your answer will be, flip it on its head again and that will be your total. However, these calculators, these are fantastic. Now, you can punch it in like this and I'm going to try and see that little button there. This gives us a fraction there and I can put in one over three and then plus one over three plus oh hang on twelve and it it wouldn't have mattered. We would have got the same answer. One over three. Now when I press press equals, can you see what I'm getting there? I'm getting three over four. Hmm. So what we need to do is do one over that number to get the real answer. Okay, so flip that. And we get a resistance of 1.33 ohms. That's our total. These have another way of doing it. It's called the one over button, or x to the minus one. Now x to the minus one is the same as one over x. Just write that on the board. One over x is equal to x to the minus one. So when you multiply it by the power of a negative number, it's the same as it being kind of downstairs, if you like. 
And this, that's what this button does, the x to the minus 1. So we can do it again like this. So we press 3, x to the minus 1, plus 12, x to the minus 1, plus 3, x to the minus 1. Then we press equals down here. And then we need to flip it again. So all we've got to do is press x to the minus 1. You see it does the answer to the minus 1. So it does it all for you. How good's that? Press equals, and we get our answer of 1.33 ohms. OK. So we've now got our total resistance. We've got our total voltage. So using Ohm's law, we can uh, calculate our total current. So let's do that. Be VT over RT, which would be 230 divided by 1.333 reoccurring. Punch that in, 230 divided by 1.3, and we get about 172.5 amps. Quite a lot. Quite a lot. But then we haven't really. Um, got a lot of resistance in the way because collectively it's as low as this. And what you'll find is that your total resistance on a parallel circuit will always be lower than the lowest value. And that's particularly important when you're doing insulation resistance on a fuse board. Um, the regulation says that it has to be a minimum of one mega, but that's over all of the circuits, not individually. So you might individually measure them and they all comply. But when you do a global check, put them into that equation, they might not comply. And that's kind of the benefit of people um, you know, testing all the circuits in one go. Um, it is a lot, it's a lot quicker. Um, right, so we've got the total current, and we'll just put that to one side for now. 2.5 amps. Now what we want to do is work out what currents are flowing through each one. So we've got current number one, current number two, and current number three. Now it's quite similar to what we did with the volt drop in a series circuit, but you just need to remember one thing. This time the voltage is the same, but the currents are going to be different. In the series circuit, the current was the same everywhere, but the voltage was different. Um, we're still doing Ohm's law, and we're still doing it in a kind of zoomed-in scope. So our equation will be the voltage, in this case it's the total voltage, so 230 volts, divided by the resistor we're interested in. So for the first one, that will be 3 ohms. Second one, that would be 12 ohms. And the third one, we're back to 3 ohms again. Do that in the old calculator. So we've got 230 divided by 3. So we've got 76 point, I'm going to say 7 amps there. Then we've got 230 divided by 12. So we've got 19.16 amps. So we can see that more current's going down the least resistive path, but we've still got current going down the high resistive path. And that's what I mean by path of least resistance. It's not that true. It, it goes down all the paths, just in different quantities. Now this one is the same as that one. So we can assume that it's going to be the same current. Now. Remember Kirchhoff that said that our volt drops add up to the supply voltage? Well, he also says that our currents in each branch should also add up to our total current. Let's see if he's right. So 76.7 plus 19.16 plus 76.7. And we get 172.16. 5, 6 amps. Um, there, there was extra numbers on that one. I'll, 
I've been naughty and rounded down there. But you can see it works again. So, Kirchhoff's law is basically, you know, a good way of checking to make sure that your um, calculations haven't gone wrong somewhere, maybe you've missed a digit or something. Um, incidentally, I'm just going to show you this one thing because it's quite handy. Now, if this one was a 3 ohm, in fact, if they're all 3 ohms, I'm just going to do them all in blue to show you this is a different example. If they're all the same resistance, we can do one easy thing to calculate the total resistance. 3 divided by 3. It splits evenly. So if you've got 3 ohms on each one, then our total resistance will be 1. Let's have a look. Make sure I haven't just got that wrong. 3, 1 over plus 3, 1 over plus 3, 1 over equals 1 over 1. Happy days. So if they're all the same value, we've got a little cheat there. We don't have to use that equation there. So there we have it. Parallel resistance. I hope it wasn't too bad for you. Um, but this one, you know, you're going to use that in the real world quite a lot. This, as I said, we use it for insulation resistance checks. And it's quite a minor use. But actually, this is representing your you know, upstairs lighting circuit, your downstairs lighting circuit, these being the lights themselves. Obviously, if they're old tungsten halogens, if they're new LEDs, um, then it, it's still in a parallel circuit, but uh, it's not technically a resistive load. Uh, LEDs are more likely to be a capacitive load um, than anything else. Um, but yeah, it, it's a real thing that we're going to deal with in the real world. Um, so it's something that you really want to get your head around just to make your life easier, really. Uh, the more knowledge we got, uh, the more problems we can solve quicker and less stressful and less costly. Um, if you can calculate things, then you're less likely to make an error um, and have to redo something. And that costs time and money and sometimes embarrassment with the customer. So knowledge is power. It's not about qualifications. It's about knowing what you're doing. Um, there we have it. Parallel resistance, done. See ya.